Welcome to Yaden Community News, your independent source for Yaden Community News. Great. 
You got pictures for the community to see by any chance? I have a couple. Okay. If there's, a, yeah, if there's any left over, I pass around. Now, I'm looking at the AP list 
on action uh, ledger uh, code number 4101310, management professional services, consult consulting professional services, what type of consultant services were provided for the community where the residents have no knowledge of? I'm also looking at um, public ledger item number 454-220, operating supplies, mulch, fertilizer, flowers, borrow, to borrow hall. The last meeting that I attended, I was under the impression that our dear Councilwoman Rosalyn Johnson donated $300 to buy the supplies for the borough hall. So how did her donation of $300 get on the accounts approval list when this young lady donated that money? What did the borough have to do with it? And last but not least, I'm looking at the projected cash flow analysis operating cash sheet. And every month, there's a note on the last page it says estimates and judgments were made in preparing this cash projection. Council, my question is this. When are we going to surpass the stage of estimates and judgments and get to the facts of how much money this borough has in the account where money is constantly being spent but we never know how much money we have in the bank? Money is being deposited, is money being taken out, but we never get a bottom line figure of how much money this borrower still has, but yet everything is being approved, but we don't know what's in their account. Can somebody please explain that to me, like I'm a six year old? Thank you. Mr. McGird, we didn't get there yet. We just approved the minutes for February 23rd. We have to go through all the minutes. We didn't get to the part that you're talking about yet, so you don't have to come. You have that, so we know. But we're only approving the minutes, the special meeting for the minutes. We didn't get to the. I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here, Mayor, to talk about the minutes. The request that I placed up there to discuss was an action item. My action item was based upon the uh, motion to approve the AP list for August of 2012. Everything that I stated up here is correlating to the approval or the non-approval of the motion for the AP list. Again, you guys are getting ready to perhaps or not pass a, 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 a AP list when there has been no engagement whatsoever with the finance committee because the committees were canceled. I'd like a motion to accept the minutes from March 15th, 2012 council meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes accepted for March 15th. Motion to accept April 12th, 2012, April 2nd, excuse me, 2012 workshop meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. I'd like a motion to accept the minutes from April 19th, 2012 council meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So the minutes are accepted. Motion to accept the minutes for May 7th, 2012 workshop meeting. <coughs> So moved. Is there a second? <coughs> All in favor? Uh, there's some unreadiness. Okay. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to page three. Uh, I think there's an error where it says the use of community park for gathering. It says there's also a sign posting advising limits to 15, restricting 15 people in community park. That is not accurate. It's groups of no more than 15. Uh, the park is not restricted to 15 people. 
is restricted to groups of no larger than 15. So please make that correction. Vice President, yes. Also on page four, I don't know if it's a typo or if it's the last part of the statement. Um, you can remind me. Councilor Johnson under black parties, and it's, uh, let's see. Line six, it says Councilor Johnson asks for the proposals that's supposed to be information, info. Is that, is that stated how it's supposed to be? Uh, Councilor Johnson, did you see that up? I don't know. Um, page four. Okay. Page four. Mm -hmm. Under black parties. Yes. Uh, 800. Which line? Line uh, six. That information is accurate. Okay. Uh, yes, I would like to draw your attention to page five. Um, uh, under Citizens Forum, it has Margo Stokes from, uh, I think that when the minutes are done from this point on, we need to use the first name instead of Ms. Johnson because uh, Clara Johnson was speaking and Lorraine Johnson is speaking and we are unable to distinguish between the two individuals when they're using the term Ms. Johnson. So in the future, I would uh, like to make sure that we're using the first and last names of individuals. So for this was... Uh... I am not sure because the comment is uh, under uh, Marco Stokes, but it says something about Councillor Kemp Shear that in the past council had asked for resumes as it was the opportunity for new council members to have a discussion of skill sets needed for Yadin. And then it says Ms. Ms. Johnson wanted council to make it clear to the residents what their parameters are. And I'm not able to distinguish between Clara Johnson and uh, Loren Johnson, and it's included in the comment under Marco Stokes. So I think we need to uh, be very careful about how we're utilizing these names in uh, the that was stated by all of Mrs. Um, Stokes, not no Mrs. Johnson's nowhere. That was stated. That statement was from all Mrs. Stokes. It definitely will change. I think we need to revise that. That comment was Mrs. Stokes' comment, not Mrs. Johnson's. All right. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to have a motion to table these minutes. Um, I think we can correct the minutes. I don't think we need to. Table the minutes. I don't think we are so egregious that we need to table the minutes. All right. So, so make a motion to amend the correct to make the corrections. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to amend the motion to add the corrections of the removal of the name Miss Johnson under the uh, comments. Citizens for form comments, and I do believe the other, what was the other revision? I'm not sure. Page three, community park. Okay, yes, and page three, community park, it should be groups of no larger than 15 people. There's another one on page six, and white six, and
We have some unreadiness. All those in favor? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes have been approved with the necessary changes. Next we have the mayor's report. I want to say good evening, everyone. It's nice to see so many out this evening. And uh, hope you're enjoying your summer. And I usually let the uh, police department give their own report. So, Chief? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, staff, and residents. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Uh, Police Department report for the month of uh, July 2012. Police Department responded to 878 calls for service. We issued 513 parking violations. Uh, we issued 187 movement violations during the month. And uh, we arrested 26 persons for various criminal offenses. Uh, during the month, uh, we took in a total of $8,916.96 uh, in revenue, uh, which was uh, comprised of uh, parking tickets, police-related reports, municipal fines, and parking permits. And for the month, the uh, fleet of vehicles were driven a total of 3,424 miles for the month of July 2012. And I can entertain any questions regarding the report. I have a question. Yes, sir. I, uh, I was looking at the package team, and you have a metro tax services for, I guess, some new equipment? Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, I just wanted to know. I, I didn't hear the first part of the, your question. Metro tax? Metro Technology? Yeah. Okay, I can answer that. Yeah. yeah, that was a grant that I secured. I believe the grant was $7,500. And it uh, actually was put in the 2012 budget, so that money won't be used. We used the grant money, and we just did the upgrade on yesterday, actually Wednesday. We converted the, uh, migrated the data from uh, Visual Alert 1 to Visual Alert 2, which is a Windows-based system, and, and surely gives us a lot more technology and the ability to uh, generate different police reports. Not only that, it gives us the ability through the Leeches program to share arrest police reports with other police agencies throughout not only Delaware County, Philadelphia County, and Montgomery County. Thank you. Uh, and Chief, I have a comment on the uh, section with the police department's bike patrol it says we will continue to aggressively investigate all reports of loitering, and uh, this this also speaks to council. The problems from the 700 block of Church Lane, yes, as a result yes. of that streetscape, are absolutely horrendous. And whatever council did, 2011 council did to try to. Uh, deter people from sitting along the walls and around the tree, it is not working. We have created a situation on Church Lane with watering that is out of control. Drug market. There have been plants, uh, the world has planted plants in around the trees now. People are sitting on those plants. I noticed that some businesses are starting to put signs in the window that say no loitering, but I think we need to uh, have a system where we can aggressively monitor what's going on in Church Lane. But this is not a problem. This is a problem that was created by council for planning, and we really need to give a lot of thought about how we are going to resolve those issues. Because, uh, if you're driving through this community, there is no way you're going to stop on Church Lane uh, to uh, take advantage of any of the businesses with the way that area looks now. So I would like to uh, address this issue at the public safety meeting in August. We need to talk, talk about that. If we not only do we need to 
aggressively monitor watering, but we need to just change that street, street state structure and come up with some ideas to keep people from sitting uh, around those uh, Councilor, I'd like to uh, reply on that issue because uh, we uh, did an aggressive attack on there. We arrested uh, approximately 10 persons. In fact, I told the mayor that tonight. Uh, involved in drugs, we confiscated close to $3,000 off of one individual down there. In fact, the president of the Business Association called me yesterday and he said to me, Chief, I don't know what you did, but you're doing the right thing. Uh, and he was very pleased with our uh, aggressiveness down there. Okay. Thank you, Chief. I also have a comment as well. I, yes. I appreciate that the things sound like they're going in the right direction. But I noticed that there are a total of 32 um, you know, thefts and vandalism. And we have 14 occurrences of vandalism and 18 of thefts. I'm just wondering um, you know, what type of trend that is, if there's anything that has um, been occurring, you know, uh, and what are some of the things that have been done to see to pick up and that theft and vandalism. Actually, all those statistics were the month are down. Uh, as you can see, we've only had two burglaries where we usually run at about 14 and 16, especially in the month of September or the month of the summer months. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the main reason I put that uh, crime prevention pamphlet out that's outside on the table. Okay. But uh, these crime statistics are really pretty much down compared to all the months uh, since January. Okay. And we need to that some of the efforts community education and when you plan to continue in those areas? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as you know, our staffing levels are way down. We're down to only 12 officers now from 15, and we had three full-time officers out for uh, more than eight weeks. Two of those officers returned. I expect a third officer returned to full duties, uh, I believe, August 22nd, which is next Wednesday. Uh, and then we'll have a complement of full, uh, full-time officers back. But we are struggling because I'm also trying to decrease the number of part-time hours there because uh, I'm coming very close to that, that was called the bank of hours. And we go over that, then we're going to have a problem. Well, because things are stable. Yes. Some, you know, and that's really if there's a Pacific crime uh, or crimes that are occurring in Pacific areas. Uh, we sent out patrol alerts and, and put foot beats out. That's what we did in the 700 block for a while. Uh, and uh, and uh, usually I don't get calls like that that praise us in regards to doing a good job down 700 block. Uh, the president of the Business Association called me yesterday just to pass it on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Chief, uh, just another please. Yes. Under the, the section that says the visual alert software, that's the third paragraph, I believe, it says see attached grant outline. Yeah, I think Councilman uh, uh, Asher Kemp just held it up in his hand. I put it in every council person's uh, packet and uh, exactly. should have received that. Exactly. It's on one page, yes, that's, that's oh, correct. All right, thank you. Thank you, I have a uh, one action, um, action item. The, we have two applicants who have submitted application to the position of alternate crossing guards. The names are Charmaine Magnetchen, is that how she pronounces her name? It's in your packet. And Wilbur Tasco. Uh, the salary is nine, $9.67 per hour. One half of the salary is paid by the uh, school district. So I'd like an action item that we hire these two individuals as uh, alternate crossing guards. Motion to approve the hiring of two alternate crossing guards at the salary of $9.67 uh, per hour. That would be Charmaine McUrchin, uh, uh, MC. A C H U R N. I'm not sure that's the correct pronunciation. And Wilbur Tasco. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you. I, I know this is recreation, but I just have to say that I am so happy that uh, the tennis, uh, my, my tennis group will be going to the Art Ash Day U.S. Open on the 25th of this month, which is next Saturday. We have about 40 children who will be going. 
It was no expense to the uh, borough this time. We were able to do it through friends for tents and some generous uh, donations that was given to us. So we have a bus and our children will be leaving at 6 a.m. on the 28th of August. I want to thank everyone in the community who supported us. Amen. That is my report. Um, the, the engineer's report. I'd like to have a motion to table to award the bid for the of library roof system replacement. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Um, the treasurer's report. Is Mrs. Johnson here? The uh, treasurer's report is available in the lobby area. Um, I believe that copy is available. And uh, just looking at the uh, total revenues for January 1st through the 31st of July. Um, and you can see the total revenues for actual are $3,570,076.47. The adopted budget is $4.8 and the budget balance is $1,321,534.50. And our total expenditures, um, $2,683,126.87. Adopted budget is, again, $4,841,611. And the budget balance is $2,158,484.32. Um, I have a, um, a concern. Uh, is the cash flow analysis a part of the treasurer's report? Or uh, are you going to review that during uh, the AP list? We can um, look at the, the cash flow analysis for each location. Is there a particular question? I know that the uh, finance manager is coming up with a different format for the report, but if there's anything in particular, uh, um, I would like to draw your attention to the funds that are listed for the cash flow analysis. We still are not receiving information on the bond fund, and I really, uh, I think we need to know where we are with the uh, bond, the 2010 bond issue. So if you could speak to Ahmed, uh, and I think that should be included in our report, in our cash flow analysis, because it will help us to determine where we are with those uh, particular projects.
and refuge fees collected four thousand four hundred thirty-two dollars and fifty cents. For a total collector for the month, seventy-four thousand three hundred eighty-eight dollars and ninety-three cents. Any questions? Finance. You have no input to stop. Thank you. I mean, we do have, excuse me, from the finance, we do have the AP list, which is uh, dated August 16, 2012. Um, I mean, that we uh, approved the AP list. Uh, with the inclusion of discussions earlier, there were some items that were discussed in the AP list that we reviewed those items and make a decision on uh, approving the list at that point. Councilor, Councilor Wright, the, you should indicate which items on the AP list that you are removing uh, as part of the motion. No.
So after moving forward, I do believe that it is important for us to include that as a part of the recreation report. Yeah, that, that will be brought up in the next meeting. Thank you. Black Day. from their uh, front windows. 
Uh, we've had numerous pre presentations from the Fellowship of the Doers about this signage problem in Yaden, and I think it's time for the code department to stop having conversations about removing those and start aggressively citing them. Cited for signage in the windows. Some of those businesses hadn't been cited in more than 12 months. So I think this is an area I would like a memo sent to the code department in reference to this. In addition, um, a Steve Travers, the former code director, said that the code department would begin in the spring to aggressively monitor the conditions of the sidewalks in this community. That is not being done. I would also like a memo to go to the code department. This is the time to start uh, really aggressively getting uh, residents to repair those sidewalks. As you know, there's some secondary liability for the borrower if those sidewalks are neglected. And I'm beginning to see areas where there is no sidewalk whatsoever on uh, in the Avenue in front of one of the residents, and that area looks horrendous. If you look out in front of the borough, you will also see right on Bailey Road, directly opposite from uh, the borough hall, a sidewalk is missing, and it has been missing for some time. So it is time for us to stop you know, giving lip service to this and start getting to the point where we see some changes in the way this community looks. All right. Good evening, Borough Council. On your agenda this evening under item 14.2 is a motion to approve the, approve the tax assessment stipulation for, for Hillview Circle. As you are aware, this is a matter we discussed in executive session of last month, and I indicated to you that it would be on the agenda this month. This was a tax assessment appeal filed by the taxpayer, the school district. Uh, William Penn School District took the uh, lead on uh, fighting this tax assessment appeal and it was resolved at a level, uh, at an appropriate level uh, based upon the appraiser's review. So that would be item 14.2. Uh, in addition to item 14.2, there were several litigation items uh, that my office has continued to monitor uh, that the insurance company is handling. Uh, that would conclude my report. Thank you. We need a motion. We need a motion to approve the tax assessments. Uh, that is under item 14.2. Okay. All business. We need a motion. I would like a motion to approve the tax assessment stipulation for folio number 48008195 So so moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. New business. Um, I'd like a motion to approve the writ of execution list dated July 17, 2012 from Portland of Law Associates limited to the collection of delinquent sewer and refuge. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. I'd like a motion for authorizing Portland of Law Associates to protect the borough's interest in the matter of colonization and nation for a flat fee of $500. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Did you clarify what that is before? Certainly, I, I can can I can I can contact Port Norfolk Law Associates to provide and, and ask them to provide you a more detailed review. But you have contracted with Port Norfolk Law Associates uh, to collect delinquent taxes 
uh, and uh, taxes that are past due, and whenever there are bankruptcies or anything challenging those taxes, put it off and goes into court on behalf of the firm. Motion carried. I'd like a motion to terminate the contract for Dr. Caroline and Harris for
Good evening. Ms. Hill, council um, neglected to cover one item as they would like to cover now prior to beginning the citizens forum. So, if you could, ex uh, if you could just wait a few moments while the council does this, thank you. Um, the Elm Street Committee. Consistent with the motion to reorganize uh, leadership, uh, council uh, is going to move forward and reorganize the committees as well for the borough. The Elm Street Committee, um, Asher Kemp, Councilor Asher Kemp, and Councilor Gracie Steen. There's only one. Is there only one? Sorry, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Public Works, Asher Kemp, and Nelva Wright. I decline. Okay. okay. Uh, Library, Deborah Robinson Howe, and Denise Stenson. YEDC, Councillor Asher Kemp. All right, sir. Councillor Nelva Wright. Personnel and Social Committee. Nelva Wright. Rosalind Johnson. I decline. Rosalind Johnson. Rosalind Johnson for the personnel. And so yes. On. Yes. And Denise Stenson. Yes. Recreation. Denise Stenson. Gracie Sneed. Yes. Code Department. Nova Wright. I decline. Asher Kemp. Decline. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Education Committee, um, Denise Stenson and Rosalind Johnson. Rosalind, John, Councilor Johnson. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Finance. Nelva Wright. Mm -hmm. Yes. Deborah Robinson. <coughs> she yeah. Rosalind Johnson. Yes. <coughs> uh, public safety. Mm -hmm. Nelva Wright. <coughs> Council members that have not taken any committees at this particular point. Some of us already have right. two or three committees. So I would suggest you look at some of the other council members that don't have any yes. committees at this particular time. Okay. Um, okay. 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 I mean, at any time, a council member can 
anticipate the community's just a point of clarity. Right. Yes. Uh, Councillor Stenson, um, I would like to draw your attention that there were four committee meetings scheduled on the 14th of August and one on the 15th. There, uh, I strongly suggest that you revisit that schedule, even though it may mean that we have to advertise again to have so many meetings on one day, yes. it, it is just uh, just a conflict, not only for counselors, but for the community to attend those meetings also. Okay, well, thank you. And still?
right into jazz and so in the clock that evening. Also, the different boroughs have given us people in the community who have done things in the community to be honored. And all you have to do is submit the names and we give awards for that community person and the girl would come out and honor that person also. Okay, so give me your first start time would be? 11 o'clock. And your ending <coughs> time would be approximately? 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Yes. And what, uh, what's the, do you have any projected number of participants? I'm asking these questions because it may require us to have additional police officers on duty, handle traffic, et cetera, at that time. Well, we're looking over a, 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 at least over a thousand people, and we have been talking also with the chief here and the Darby chief, uh, also in reference to it. Um, State Rep. Waters has security also that's coming and that um, security that he uses from all of his events too. But we're definitely looking for the chief to be actively involved in it. Also, he's been wonderful um, with helping us with the format down there. And this is to the which is the community. Fund. No, this is not a fundraiser. Fresh Start received a, a grant. We put in a grant to be able to give back to the community. We receive a lot of funding from different organizations in the community to help our children. So we put in a grant, and I had talked to Denise about it earlier in the summer, but so much had gone on, and, and even John had come to my office, and we met several times in, in reference to it. But again, so much stuff has happened here that we kind of backed off um, from that, but it's to give back to our community. Oh, and so it's just an event. Yes, and that's for Gaten and Darby. Darby does a lot for our children and live here and Gaten, and it's time for Gaten to start giving back to them. The question for the solicitor is, this is being held on private property. I believe it would be the parking lot of the McDade Center. So uh, do we have to approve that in any way? No, we're not going for No, we do not. No, we do not, Councilor Johnson. Okay, we're not, we're not coming for approval. We are got to be approved, it's approved just an and we have attorneys that are in with it. Uh, it's just an announcement to let you know, and again, to get support from Gaten Council. Again, every other girl is doing something. Maybe Gaten girl could bring tables and chairs out. Those are some of the things that we left behind that hopefully that Gaten would be responsible um, for, for this event and for Council to be visible and to play a major part in it also. I am a resident of Eden and an elected official also of Eden in the sixth precinct. And we want to see our girl involved and not all the time every other girl and we're not visible. It's time for us to get active with it. Um, the former mayor Rosie comes out to everything. We want to see our mayor out and our new girl president and vice president and our council members. Thank you. I don't, I don't have my part. And I do have some information for you. This is not something that we're giving out to the public. This is just a little rough drive of the groups who are going to be out because every day we have somebody new that's signing on to participate. Okay? So I can leave you with this. Any other questions? Mrs. McCarthy, can yes. you put that on the channel and the website? Oh, we would love to. We okay. The different um, radio stations are going to be announcing it also. Oh. Um, something important. We do have a banner that was made. We will be getting the banner tomorrow. Are we able to have it hung? Where would you want to have it? Well, I know normally it's hung right here, out front. Out so front. we would um, ask that the borough decide which you have to see. Where's the best place to hang it? Yes, we could do that. Okay, very good. Thank you. And the chairs and the tables, will be able to do now. You're going to bring those items out? Uh, let me talk to Public Works. All right, let me talk to Public Works. Okay, and I would be able to get an answer by the way. Darby's ready. But again, I don't want Darby to do everything. This is our girl, and it's taking place in our girl. And what day is September? It's a Saturday. No, September the 8th is a Saturday. Please don't confuse us now. We've been over the state of It's September. It's September, not August. It's the 8th. Okay. Any 
other questions? We have vendors that are coming out also. Something special we need to do in regards to that, correct? Okay, very good. Thank you. I hope to see everybody there. Richard Barnes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, President, Council, Council members, and residents of Yates. Excuse me. The fellowship of the Dewar members have continued our campaign to work to ensure the Yates is a desirable community in which to live. We have asked our government to require Yates Code Department to monitor and ensure compliance with codes, ordinances pertaining to the safety and appearance and quality of life in our community. Fellowship of the Doers believe that local businesses have a responsibility to assist in preserving the quality of life in Yates. The appearances of our business community is one of the keys to ensuring that visitors to our community see us as a good place to live and conduct a business. Multiple signs and clutter with store windows overflowing trash dumpsters, <coughs> excuse me, trash dumpsters, unattractive property landscaping, excessive signage, and litter do not contribute to Yates' long-term stability, and they discourage some owners who may want to operate in our community. Over the past several months, we have targeted local businesses that have exhibited obvious code violations. One business that has been of great concern to us is the Brewer's Outlet on Church Lane. We objected to the owner's disregard for our codes that prohibit signs on the side of the buildings and limit 15% of the coverage of a windows glass area. Twice, we wrote to the owner and asked him to comply with our codes by removing the signs on the side of the buildings and by ensuring that only 15% of each glass area in his windows had signage. The owner complied with respect to the window signage and even removed some of the signs on the side of the building, but continued to prominently advertise Colt 45 beer in his windows and on the side of the building. On June 22nd, we both hand delivered and sent a registered letter to him that included the following statements. We believe that you are in violation of chapter 1274.02. All signs shall front on the street. In addition, you have added signs to the side of your building since removing many of the smaller signs advertising Bull 45. As we have stated in our previous communications, we strenuously object to the advertisement of this particular beer product because we believe you are especially targeting our young African American males. As a predominant African American community, we are insulted that you choose to deliberately take advantage of young residents. We are asking one last time to comply with barrel codes and ordinances with respect to all your business signage and with our, with our previous request that you remove the large sign on the side of the building. And we demand that you remove the Colt 45 signage on the side of your building and in the windows on the building by Friday, June 29, 2012. On Friday, June 29, we visited the Brewers Outlet. The owner of the business informed us that he had immediately removed the Colt 45 signs that we objected to when he received a letter. And then when the code department, a code officer came to his building and told him he was okay. Please note, he removed the Colt 45 signs that we objected to. However, he had not removed the signs on the side of the building. The owner of the business was very cooperative. He expressed an interest in working with us and said that he wanted to be part of this community. Chapter 1274.02, Yaden Borough provides that all signs shall, shall front on the street. However, the Brewers Outlet has been allowed for years to post advertising on the side of the building, including a large sign with a company name which also advertises the sale of beer and cigarettes in large print. The Fellowship of the Doers now asks Borough Council the question, how can a code inspector advertise, advise a business owner that his building is okay when signs posted on the side of the building are an obvious violation of the code that has always been in effect? We further pose the question to the borough solicitor. Is there an exception in the codes and ordinances that allows this business to post signs on the 
side of their buildings. Sure, not that I'm aware of, uh, and I would advise Borough Council, based upon your comments here this evening, to speak with the Code Department and ask the Code Department uh, to provide clarification on the topic, uh, to have them review that, and in, in, in the event uh, the uh, information you have provided us is accurate, uh, I would, I, Borough Council will advise the Code Department to take the appropriate action. Thank you, sir.
And I think it's well past you that we are recognized for the true gay nights that we are. And that when people speak of gay from now on, they speak about us as a progressive people and a progressive, a progressive community. Thank you very much. Your independent source for news and information.